Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome new friend. My name is Cherie and I'm the owner and creator behind the business called The Freckled Cottage. I love to thrift, flip, and make discarded items wanted again. Sometimes I place them into my booth and sometimes I keep them for my own decor, but I always have fun doing it. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a couple thrift to treasures, one from an estate sale and one thrift store find and transform them using lots of DIY clay-based paint and an IOD paint inlay. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. First step is this bright red painted plaque from a local thrift store. I love the size and shape of the piece, but I am definitely not a fan of the bright red background. And the words, Scandinavian, maybe, fit gummy paint used to create the flowers. I need to get rid of that. So with this, the first thing I did was degunk it with a couple wet wipes. No sense in clogging up my sandpaper with sticky gunk. I then brought the piece outside to the garage and gave it a nice sand, the front especially because the paint they used was thick and a little gummy. It took a little more effort than I expected to get a smooth surface. Once I had that smooth surface, I took it back inside and applied two coats of Dixie Belle Boss Primer to the front to block any wood tannins that might come through and to the back to block all of the red paint that I'm sure would come through any light colored paint that I was about to apply. Once that was all dry, I selected my paint, and this one is Dixie Belle in the color Drop Cloth. I went ahead and applied two coats of Drop Cloth to the back side, although I did not film me, do film me doing this, as well as two even coats to the front side. For this project, I decided on the fork and spoon in the Melange Paint Inlay from IOD. I thought it would fit the plaque perfectly, and it was like a match made in heaven. In an effort to try and minimize the harsh lines that can sometimes be left behind when an inlay has dried, I was careful to trim the excess paper in a rounded fashion. At that point, I had to take a break, and so when I came back several hours later, I grabbed DIY crinoline, for some reason, and got to work applying a nice thick even coat, even though that is not the color that I meant to use. So as you can see here, I got started applying the paint and then realized, right about here, that I was using the wrong color. Hey, it happens when you have three and a half million other things going on. It was a quick fix though. I got out the heat gun and dried it quickly, got out the right color, which is drop cloth. Have you ever applied the wrong color to a piece and almost didn't even notice? I can't be alone in this, right? So when applying a paint inlay to your surface, you wanna create a nice and thick, yet even coat of paint paint for it to lay into. You don't want it to be too thin or too thick, but somewhere in between that gives just the right amount of base for the inlay to absorb into. You also want to make sure that it's wet paint and that it won't dry too fast. For this reason, I like to use a light mist of water as I'm spreading out the paint. I fumbled just a little bit the first time getting the inlay applied perfectly centered and straight. This is especially tricky when you're filming and don't want to give your audience a full view of the back of your head. It's a great thing that applying the inlay into the paint is pretty forgiving. It's usually pretty easy to lift it back up and reposition it without too much disturbance to the surface paint layer. Once I had the inlay where I wanted it, I used my fingers to lightly press the inlay into the surface paint layer, being super careful not to tear the inlay. Right after that, I used my mister bottle again to dampen the back of the inlay. 
and then a further moistened wet wipe to ensure the inlay was evenly dampened and any excess moisture removed. Now, you put on your patient's pants and let it dry completely. I don't recommend speeding up this process with a heat gun. Once it was completely dry all the way through, I took my mister bottle again and repeated the process of dampening the inlay and dabbing off the excess with a wet wipe. I've used these steps numerous times with no problems, but I don't usually see other creators doing this, and I know a lot of beginners have issues. So give this method a try if this has ever been an issue for you in the past. Make sure you let it sit for a full 60 seconds before you start to peel. I know it doesn't seem like I did here, but I promise I did. Isn't it the coolest thing watching that mirror image appear as you peel back a successful inlay? Also, when peeling back your inlay, be careful not to tear it. You can set it aside to dry and it can be used again, up to two or three times. Subsequent uses may not be as vibrant or complete, but that can just add to a worn, vintage image. I did still get some of those dreaded inlay lines, so I decided to see if stippling in some of the background paint would help disguise them. Not only did it help minimize the appearance of the inlay lines, but it added a little texture to the whole piece. Due to design differences, it won't work in every case, but it's a nice technique to add to your tool belt. Once the paint was dry, I took it outside and gave it a quick light spray of a matte sealer. This is important because if you try to brush a sealer directly over the fresh inlay, there is a very good chance that it will smear. Later that day, I brought it back in and used a 150 grit sandpaper to give the edges a heavy distress and a 220 for a very light distress of the fork and spoon. After dusting it off, I got out my DIY wax in clear and put a nice finish on the whole piece. It's funny, I only have a very small clear wax brush and this very large one. Do any of you have any good recommendations on a medium sized wax brush that won't constantly be shedding hairs? If you do, please let me know in the comments. I then got out my Kills Dark Wax and gave all of the edges a really nice antiquing. I always apply clear wax before any colored wax. This allows you to a lot more easily pull back the colored wax to your liking and avoid a big dirty looking mess. I really like how this project turned out and the inlays are so much fun to work with. It's gonna look great hanging in my kitchen. Today's second project is this framed print that I got at an estate sale. I just love this adorable little dog trying to crow along with the rooster. However, the frame itself was boring and so I decided that I wanted to create a distressed and worn finish using brighter colors that would bring the aged print back to life. I got to work removing all the stickers and tags this tag says $10, but it was 50% off that day, so I believe that I got it for $5. Then I used a wet wipe to give it a quick once over. Because I love this cute print so much, I'm primarily gonna be working on the frame for this project. Like I said, I'm going for a distressed and worn finish, so I'll be working with several layers and doing a lot of color mixing to bring out some of the print colors. For the first layer, I'm trying to match the color of the wood in the print, so I decided to go with DIY Prairie Gray and Faded Burlap. Something in between those two was just right.
I used the heat gun to speed up the drying process and then I forgot to film myself distressing the paint back and applying an even coat of DIY's Big Top Sealer. Oops! For each of these layers, I want to be able to distress back to the previous layer without muddying up the colors or going too deep and the Big Top will help me do that. For the next layer, I wanted to try and get close to that dark green in the rooster's tail feathers. I considered just altering aviary, which I have and is similar, but I felt like doing a bit more color mixing. So I mixed up about one to one parts of Bohemian Blue and Summer Crush. I felt I was on the right track with this mixture because it made a nice deep army green, but I felt it was a bit too dark so I added a little crinoline to lighten it up. Once the crinoline was mixed in, I thought it was just right. I used the heat gun to dry it up quickly and then used a couple wet wipes to distress back that layer because I wanted the brown base layer to show through a bit. For the next layer, I wanted to bring out that deep red-orange color in the rooster's breast, so I got out DIY's Summer Crush, a sample of Marquee, and I considered using Prairie Gray, but opted for just a hint of black velvet instead. And guys, when attempting to darken a paint mixture, be very sparing with adding very dark colors such as black. A tiny bit goes a long way. Sometimes when mixing colors, you have to keep making little tweaks until you get just what you're after. You see here that I added a bit more of the marquee and a tiny smidge more of the black velvet to get a perfect feather color. In my excitement to mix that red color, I almost forgot to apply the big top, so here you see me doing that. For this deep red layer, my intention is to distress back a lot, so I'm not going for full coverage at all. I really want a lot of that green to show through. Sometimes, as you can see, I find it difficult to hold back though. Once dry, I distressed the red layer heavily.
I got out the heat gun once again and then I used the DIY wax and clear to seal all that right up. I felt like I wanted to grunge it up a little bit and maybe bring in some of the pup's spots. So after the clear wax was applied, I got out the Dixie Belle Bestang Wax in black and worked it into just the crevices and grooves and then I wiped it back with a soft cloth. Once I was done with all the paint and products, I got out my favorite scraping tool to clean off the glass. It's so much easier to do it this way and not have to destroy the paper finish on the back of the frame. This tool is really, really handy. On one end, it has a razor blade and the opposite end is a plastic blade that makes really quick work of sticky tags and gummy residues. I will add an Amazon link to it and all the products used in today's video in the description box below.